Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Glad you were here to see it. Now let's get some distance before that thing goes. Look. Now let's get some distance before that thing goes supernova. How do you pronounce supernova? What inflection? Supernova or supernova? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a thing we call frame rate. Episode 146, I'm Tom Merritt. Yeah, and it's not Flame Bait. That's a different no. show, although we certainly nope. seem to be that. Frame Rate is your source for Flame Bait. I'm Brian Bush. We bait the flames so you don't have to. <laughs> no, this is the show that thinks you, my friend, you right there, the one watching or listening to this, should be able to watch what you want, when you want, where you want, on whatever darn device you please, and we're going to bring you the news and information you need to know to do that. Yeah, unless you're yeah. like the man sitting there in your fat cat offices smoking your stogies saying, no, it has to be closed, to which I say, jerk, stop watching our show. I, Brian, I'd say I'll even, I'll even help that guy figure out how Not to me. watch what he wants, when he wants. I'll, because I'll once he help. does, no, but here's the thing, Brian, once he does, he'll go, I have been so wrong in my fat cigar smoking life. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's words. not so wrong is your pick, Tom Merritt, for today's big story. This just in, the big story. If this big story is wrong, I don't want to be right, Brian. <laughs> uh, a good Comcast, Comcast is, you will see headlines, my friends, that say Comcast is uh, selling HBO without a cable subscription. Those are lies. Those are just plain lies. But what Comcast is doing is they're bundling in HBO with their basic plan and internet for $40 per month as a way to appear as if they are delivering you HBO and an internet connection without anything else. Well, it's weird because essentially what they're saying is like, we know you don't care about anything except for internet and HBO. So we'll very loudly point out that we'll do these things. Also, by the way, we'll give you all the rest of the cable channels. This is, the moment I read this, it made me think exactly of the fact that that I am paying a higher price right now to only get uh, internet and telephone from Time Warner instead of also please just keep cable. Like we'll pay you, we'll literally pay you $7 a month if you'll just keep cable. And I said, no. So it's like 25, uh, 25 megabits per second. Is that that's what the, this, this deal is? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, that's good. Look, it's a good deal. I'm, I'm spending much, much more uh, to, to, but to get But you're getting you're getting a higher bandwidth rate, I'm guessing, right? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. Like double. Right. No, but, but, but my point was, is that Time Warner said uh, we will cut down your bill even more if you'll just please take the rest of the cable packages. You don't have to watch them or nothing. Just please continue to take cable. And uh, and it made me giddy to see them squirm, so I said no. Sure, sure. Would you say no to this? Uh, yes, I would. Uh, I don't know. Dude, I'm I don't know. Cutter. Cutter. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a principal thing. That's what I'm saying. Like right now, well, right now it's a sports team thing for me. I'm just too excited. I'm all caught up in a set fire to the industry firestorm, as we found out two weeks ago in our discussion. right. right. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm very much just a, along the practical lines of, of just being like, well, okay, if it gets me what I want, then that's fine. I still think this is. This, there's some trapdoors in this deal, right? It goes up to seventy dollars per month, or in some places I read eighty dollars per month after the first year. So you got to play the chicken challenge after a year with this thing, right? You got to go back to them and say like, oh, I don't think I want to do this anymore and get them to give you that introductory rate again, which that's kind of ridiculous. Also, yes, twenty five megabits per second. It's not the best you could do. It's not bad. Trust Dude, me. But how great yeah. is it that we live in a world where we can kind of shrug our shoulders like 25 megabits per second? Yeah, all right. Like this well, is I'm amazing. Thinking, if you told me that 10 years ago, I'd be freaking out. Actually, there's a there's a big BBC article today uh, about this study that was put out showing how the United States has the slowest internet in the world for the price. 
Uh, so, you know, the fact that 20, 25 megabits per second, nobody, that's like the bargain basement in Korea and Japan. And they're, they're spending $35 for gigabit there. But anyway, yeah. that, that Plus, aside, also they're, they're all better at playing StarCraft than we are. We need to well, close the lot. gap. There are two gaps that we need to close with Korea. The Star StarCraft gap and the uh, the bandwidth gap. We got to close that. Well, they, they kind of go hand in hand, don't they? Yeah, they do. Maybe. See, that's the problem. That's the only reason we're losing at StarCraft is because we have lag. It's not us. We're, we got mad skills. If you were, if this were a LAN, it'd be a whole different story, jerks. It's those monoplies. That's the ones that are that are causing the problem. Monoplies took me a second to figure out what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Is, but, but seriously, what do you think about this? Your principles aside, the idea that like, okay, instead of doing that that little dance that we talked about a while back, where you buy a broken dish receiver and then you call them up and you get their basic package and HBO, this is like above board, and they're going to throw in the internet too. They're going to like, oh, we'll give you 25 megabit per second internet. You'll get the basic package of channels, which is pretty much just local channels and cable access channels but you'll get hbo which gives you hbo go uh, for 40 bucks a month yeah here's the thing to remember is that uh, all of these corporations you know they're, they're they're big entities and they have different branches and each branch is looking out for their own interests and in this case you have the marketing branch at least recognizing this is what people want to hear so let's figure out a way to get as close to saying let's try to get so close to saying hbo and internet for a low price without actually saying it and uh, and and it's great and of course as we've seen everybody misrepresents it and the stories of course explode that you know finally a la carte hbo which is not what they're doing but the fact that at least some part of the hydra is finally saying the things that we want to hear that's pretty exciting yeah and i think it's hbo's way of trying to socialize the isps that you know we're, we're gonna do this we're, we're going to go internet only but we're willing yeah. to kind of help you along the way by doing some of these bundling. And if you have to bundle it in with your cable channels for now to juice your stats, it's like the wire, right? They're like, they just want to have the, the stats look good on paper to the shareholders. That's fine. We'll, we'll help you with that. Yeah, do, you, do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like the early 2000s when you had one arm of Sony actively looking to crush MP3 formats and another arm of Sony releasing MP3 playing hardware. Because again, every every little piece of the puzzles looking out for its own interests. And I think the wire is a good parallel there. I think that's, that's what we're starting to see. It's, it's another crack in the facade, man. I hope, uh, I hope this goes somewhere. We want to see subscribers on the table, Brian. <laughs> or, or some, some analog. Like you, yeah. You come, you come at the, uh, you come at the uh, broadband suppliers. You best not miss. This is that's a right. lesson here. <laughs> the broadband stands alone. Let's get to another big story. <laughs> Stop everything. It's another big story. Oh, I, I moved this along before I mentioned Rocco Pendola, by the way. And this is just a minor aside. Uh, he has an article on the street saying, shut up, everyone. Netflix is not coming to Comcast or Time Warner Cable, uh, which we got all excited about on this show for various reasons. Uh, but Rocco Pendola says, this is all bluster on Netflix's part to sow fear, uncertainty, and doubt in, into the minds of consumers. The cable companies will never accept Netflix into their world. At least that's his yeah. argument. Well, and and it 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 I, I like the way you put it because it was it it was the position that I failed to articulate well two weeks ago. You know, that that I couldn't understand. Obviously Netflix has a lot to gain, but I couldn't understand why on earth a cable company would do it. And it's good to hear that somebody else felt the same way in that regard. Well that was yeah, and uh, that was one of the things we did agree on is we're both like the cable companies should not do this. Right. Uh you know, we we disagreed on on whether it would be bad for consumers, but I think everybody was like, "Yeah, I don't I don't get what the cable companies would get out of this." Right. Well, and, and the only way I could picture it, and if I can remember my position, was that uh, that cable companies would take this hit to inoculate them against right. a full blown disease of a cord cutting revolution. You know, like fine. We'll pay these guys off and keep them inside the ecosystem. But that's not another big story. Our no, big, it's not. Uh, our, no, another big story is. Nielsen uh, has announced that it is finally launching its uh, long-anticipated ratings of mobile devices. Now, it's not just mobile devices. It includes DVRs, internet-connected TVs, tablets, smartphones, and browsers. Uh, and if you go into the, the Nielsen press release on this, Brian, they, they talk about how they're going to take this data. They, they call it like we're combining census-type surveys, which is what Nielsen has done forever, with big data, 
which is how they're collecting off of the mobile devices to bring one unified rating. Uh, and the unified encoding approach means that if you're watching a broadcaster's TV show on a digital device, and this is from the Nielsen press release, and it meets the ad load and timeline requirements for TV ratings, then that viewing will credit to the Nielsen TV rating. Now, they also have a Nielsen digital program rating that is for things that don't meet that criteria. But let me read that again. Ad load and timeline requirements. In other words, if it's the same ads and it's the same point in the show that the ads show up as you would get watching it on your regular television, it's just going to roll into the regular TV. So Aereo gets rated under this. Your sling box gets rated under this. And if a network decides to make a stream available of exactly what's on air, that would also roll into the ratings. And and so again, like something like Hulu would not count in this because Hulu would have different ads. Uh, and uh, I assume if they post a full episode on YouTube or whatever, that wouldn't count as well. That would go uh, I, into I, the Nielsen digital ratings, which are a separate thing. And, and that's not a bad thing. Or they could change the way Hulu works and do the same timeline and ad load and then it would count. Yeah, and it doesn't even seem like that would be too difficult to do. I mean, I assume somewhere is a master file that you adjust to say, I, I okay, for it. this particular window, you can show this exact ad to these number of people. I would I would think they would be able to do that, whether they will or not, because the rate cards are different and this and that for a while. I don't know. But it is a big step towards getting rid of one objection to giving you on the internet what you get over your cable, which is, well, they don't get rated. That was one of the big complaints about Aereo in the early days was, well, and, and we're losing money because those those viewers aren't rated. Well, now they can be. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you what, this is the kind of story where it's like we reported and it sounds like Nielsen was late to the game, finally woke up. You're like, oh, I guess we'll start counting those internet views. Uh, keep They've been working on this for years. I would yeah, say you yeah, know, for yeah, a half decade or more, they've been trying out different uh, different paradigms, trying to figure out which which way the market was going, uh, which are the valuable views. Because obviously, you know, if if as viewers we we tend to think of like, oh, the numbers for who are watching Game of Thrones or whatever, you know, uh, we want to throw in BitTorrent and all the offline views and people. You know, we just want to know how many people are looking at a thing. Uh, that doesn't matter to anybody putting any real money to any of this stuff. Numbers matter only to the extent that they guarantee a purchased message to reach everyone and and in that regard it makes sense that they're that they're taking these kind of half measures and these baby steps towards uh getting a universal count absolutely all right shall we fire up the slipstream we wait do you fire it or it seems like we'd be unleashed like we'd, we'd, we'd pull it, it? Yeah, we'd, yeah there you go let's let's open the floodgates to the to the open slipstream. the stream gates to the yes. slip the streams let's, Let's unzip the sli the slipstream. <laughs> Un unzip zip the slip. Uh, this is let's not going well. This in the bud let's, and talk about slip. Netflix. Uh, when we when we when we last met last week, Netflix had just released the their earnings. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but Netflix had not responded to their earnings yet, and so now we have a, a raft of quotations. Uh, from Reed Hastings and others at Netflix about what those great rate, uh, earnings reports meant. One of it is CEO Reed Hastings saying that they're going to get into more original content next year, including movies. Yeah, uh, I didn't they, know this. They, they they mentioned, and what's funny, this is this is uh, how how dumb I am of the actual business of making original content. They said uh, in the beginning of this article that Netflix is spending ten percent of its revenues on original content. And I thought, holy cow, 10% of billions is like a really big number. That's quite an investment. Then it goes on to say, we, we want to be more like HBO, who spends 40% of their <laughs> revenues on original content. And my brain's just exploded out the back of my skull. Yeah, it's it, it, it's they're getting outspent four times right now. They also said that it's their acquisitions that drive the most viewing right now. It's the Walking Deads. It's it's the Mad Men. It's that stuff. Even though Orange is the New Black is their most viewed original, and they're seeing a halo effect of stickiness, is what they said, which sounds like it might need a cleanup. But they think it's a good thing because it keeps people watching Netflix. Uh, and they're going to look into commissioning documentaries. Now, People are like, well, Netflix has been had original documentaries before. Netflix has gone and they've found documentaries that were in maybe limited release or only at festivals, and they've given them a platform through Netflix. But Netflix is now saying we're we're going to pay for them. We're going to we're going to give the money and say, here, go make a documentary. 
Yeah, I think that's a smart thing for them to do because they've been very savvy in the way they've acquired documentaries uh, and they've, they've discovered that they offer a unique benefit and that they can take quirky stories uh, with unusual you know, messages in, in documentary form. And my guess is because they've focused so much on it in the past, they've recognized, wow, a lot of people go clicking you know, at point A and point C. If only there was something here in point B in between the two, I think we would get a lot of views for it. So I suspect that they'll be very smart about how they go forward in that. And they're talking about giving a third season to House of Cards, and we haven't even seen the second season yet. Heck but yes. That's that's amazing, that. man. That is that is astonishing to me that we live in a world where, where the predictive capability of amazing storytelling is so strong that they can commit, you know, hundreds of millions of more dollars in advance to something that they just know on paper, you know, should, should pull in that many views. That's awesome. And and all, all of the talk around House of Cards has been, well, it was two seasons. It's always been two seasons, 26 episodes, and then we're out. Uh, and now Ted Sarandos at, at uh, Netflix told Deadline, oh, yeah, we'd, we'd like to give him another one. So it's not for sure, you know, but come on. Who? I guess if you couldn't get Kevin Spacey and Robin Wright to come back, because they, they probably want to go make movies again. Uh, and How this bad? Would be quite a commitment. How bad do you want some reporter to ask Netflix for a statement on season three of House of Cards and for Netflix's official response to be, you may think so, I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they absolutely should do that. Would that be no amazing? Reason, there's no reason why they should not do that. Please, <laughs> please, Netflix, please do that. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the tube top, shall we? I'm going to throw you all off, uh, even you, Jason, because uh, I just saw this like right before I sat down at my desk. Uh, Netflix, according to All Things D, and I'm going to put this in the uh, in the chat room, is thinking about starting a service that would deliver movies to your house while they are still in the theater. Wait, this sounds familiar. This sounds yeah. uh, that that uh, the the Prima Cinema thing, right? Yeah. Uh, they would foot the bill for a big movie, which would appear in theaters and on Netflix at the same time. Now, it's different than Prima in that uh, Prima, which I originally had in the tube top section here, because that's the set top box that you pay an arm and a leg for. Uh, and it's got all this high level encryption on it. But it will deliver you right now movies that are in the theaters, at least from Sony. And IMAX just sunk some money in it because they would like to deliver IMAX movies into home theaters through the Prima system. But the Prima Man. system is for like are, people oh, with right, wait, 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 Yeah, real, real quick. Can I can we say, can, I can think of no faster way. Like IMAX has been hell-bent hell bent in the last 10 years on undermining their brand. There was a time that IMAX meant one thing, exquisite production capability and visuals that would blow your brains out. And then at some point it just became like, I don't know, it's the theater down the street uh, with the Coke ads before it and broadcast in 2K. Now IMAX wants to be associated with, uh, it's the crap that's in Joe's living room down the street. It's, it's amazing to me to watch the systematic dismantling of what was, to me, a very powerful property beforehand. Well, and I agree with you about the, the theater down the street because it's not an IMAX screen. It's the same proportions it's the same right. aspect ratio, but it's not a right. true IMAX screen. If you go to an actual IMAX theater with the full-on IMAX experience, it's light years beyond going to a regular theater with a big screen and going, oh, it's taller. You know, it's just, yeah. it's not the same thing. And I, I, I think you're right about that. What Netflix is saying they want to do, though, th this is Ted Sarandos again uh, in a speech hosted by Film Independent, a nonprofit behind the Spirit Awards. What we're trying to do for TV which he's talking about Orange is the New Black and House of Cards, should extend pretty nicely to movies. Why not premiere movies on Netflix the same day they're opening in theaters? And not little movies. There's lots of ways and lots of people to do that. Why not big movies? Why not follow the consumer's desire to watch things the way they want? Now, is this... Okay, Prima to happen had to be outrageously expensive, cost you hundreds right. of dollars per movie to rent. You don't even own them. And it had to come with crazy encryption on it. That's probably not even necessary, but just to make the movie studios feel comfortable, they put way more encryption than they needed on these things. And Ted Sarandos is out there like, yeah, I think we could get movies to premiere in the theaters. There's only two, two answers to this in my mind, Brian. Yes. Either 
Netflix is going to commission more than just documentaries and they're going to premiere them in theaters at the same time. And good luck getting the theaters to carry them in that case. Or he's this is more blowing smoke up people's butt the way that the way we're going to negotiate with Time Warner Cable and Man. Comcast to show up on the devices. I'll tell you what, you know, I have this inherent trust for Netflix, but you uh, seeing them play all this game theory talk and and I don't know, maybe there's a reason they're the ones who put together House of Cards. Maybe we're the <laughs> ones being manipulated by by the powers that be. I, I, I This is a new angle that I had not previously considered on whether or not we could trust Netflix because we've seen a number of, uh, and they've always been clever, you know, no, out, I, I, actually, no, I'm going to take that back. Netflix has also said some really dumb stuff on the record. You know, the Quickster thing, the splitting off the DVD and stuff. Like, they really are kind of, they're the, re Netflix is the really talented half crazy uncle in this whole story where it's yeah. like they keep putting out great product. They keep doing things that we all like and that's why they're loaded, but they're kind of nuts and all over the map in We're the stuff they're saying. We're going to call it Quickster. Okay, yes, yeah. okay, Uncle Reed. As just don't. You are. It's, it's like, yeah, Uncle, Uncle Reed's great. Just you know, don't ask him about the Zionist conspiracy or whatever. You know, it's like there's there's off limits. <laughs> don't territory. ask him about the DVD rental conspiracy. He gets yes. a little crazy. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. I, I yeah. mean, it's like, uh, man, I don't know. It's crazy. Someone well, in the chat room, Tor is calling him the uh, coked up businessman from the 80s. <laughs> Maybe that's what's going on. Kind of right. I mean, I, I feel like. Uh, the the other option, the more more charitable option, is that Netflix really is trying to shake up this industry. They they are on the outside, and when no one would rent would would license them the TV stuff, they started to get in trouble. You know, get in trouble with people saying well, we're not going to license our TV stuff to you. They said, fine, we'll go make television, and they did. And this is them saying, I don't see why these movies have to be held back from us. We'll just. We'll make the movies. And that now they're like, we'll we'll show movies in the theater. They just have to do it once. If they can get it to happen once, then there's got to be some indie filmmaker with a big enough name and a big enough movie uh, that they could maybe wrest distribution away from. Again, the trick here is like, even if they get a filmmaker to agree to have Netflix be the distributor, right? Netflix doesn't have any relationships with theaters. And the theater owners are going to be like, screw you, Netflix. You're trying to keep put us in, out of business, even though they're not. In, yeah, keep in mind also that Netflix is also, it's efforts to, when it spends money on original content, it's not just that they want the notoriety of launching the original content. It's not just that they want people to uh, to, to fuel subscriptions. Um, we've gotten some emails uh, at frameratio at gmail.com of people saying, I don't know, it just feels cheesy to me when I see the beginning of House of Cards and it says Netflix Presents. That's a branding issue, and I think that's a legitimate concern. I think I think Netflix does have a branding issue. I wonder how much this effort could be part of a multi-year strategy to yeah. help to, I, I, I don't want to say rehabilitate, but to transform the Netflix brand into one that you respect the way we do with HBO Originals. You know, when we see that HBO Originals opening, we think, oh, really good stuff's about to happen, and Netflix doesn't have that. It's a bit of a, and, and in fact, might might be fighting against it because for a long time, Netflix has been the home of bargain base, or at least Netflix streaming has been the home of, of, of bargain deals for old forgotten TV shows and so on. So maybe, you, I don't know. Do you, do you remember when the first HBO originals came along? And Fraggle Rock uh, is the one I can, I can earliest remember, but there were others. Not necessarily the news is the one I remember. Not necessarily that's, the that's, news. That's and, where I learned about the upward. And it was upward. like HBO original meant, well, don't laugh too hard. It's actually not that bad. You know yeah. what I mean? It didn't yeah. mean what it means now. Uh, exactly. And I, think, I think that's part of it. And also, they use the Netflix logo. What do you associate Netflix's logo with? You associate it with the wrappers that your DVDs went back in. Yeah. That doesn't you, mean you, you quality it with television the, show. Yeah. You associate it with that copy of, uh, of, of Steel Magnolias mocking you on the yeah. desk that's been there for five weeks straight that you swear you're going to get around to watching eventually. It means business reply mail to me. That's, yes. that's, what, that, that's yes. what that logo means. Oh, postage <laughs> paid. That's nice. Um, so yeah, they've, and I think you're right, Brian. I think that this is part of a, of a strategy to change that perception. Let us stir the film film pot. Stir. I like it. Yeah? I think it's because there was a film filming over the Falm 
And so we had to stir That's it. That's good. You got to mix it up. Otherwise, yeah. it's just going to coag. And it, the problem is it sticks to the spoon when you spin around. You're like, oh, yeah, look at all that like film that. film. It's disgusting. Yeah. Let's get... Ooh, look at that. Uh, we, you know, we got to mix this up. Let's bring in Lawrence Kasdan to finish the Star Wars script. That's our first story here. Michael Arndt. Wait, 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 wait hold on. When you, when you say Lawrence Kasdan, I mean, maybe it's just my generation, but I tend to think of the guy who wrote the amazing movies, Raiders of the Lost Ark and Empire Strikes Back, the best of the entire Star Wars series. Uh, what a coincidence. This guy's got the same name. Yeah, it's the same guy. He's got the what? same genes too. Yeah, what? not all the same cells he had when he wrote Empire Strikes Back because those shed, but mostly the same guy, definitely the same brain. <laughs> mostly the same guy. <laughs> Can we make that our headline? <laughs> it's most of Lawrence Kasdan. He's in there for the most part. Uh, yeah, this is huge, man, because uh, both J.J. Abrams and Lawrence Kasdan know how to tell stories. And uh, certainly J.J. Abrams, you know, it, 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 I... I, 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 I I can't talk about this too much without getting like all misty eyed and excited. Oh, you got Tom. excited. It's, it's I thought really... you knew like you knew some secret. You're like, I can't talk no. about this too much because I've also been brought in. Right on this. No, I, I, I lose any credibility as a journalist. I turn into like second grade Brian just wanting to, to froth at the mouth with excitement over this. Uh, do you, do you believe stars Kathleen are aligning, Kennedy? man? Well, okay. Kathleen Kennedy said, uh, and this part's very true. There are very few people who fundamentally understand the way a Star Wars story works like Larry, and it's nothing short of incredible to have him blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's all great stuff. But she says something about Michael Arndt. We we owe him a, you know, a lot of thanks. Oh, Michael Arndt has done a terrific job bringing us to this point, and we have an amazing filmmaking and design team in place already prepping for production. Now, I've left out that J.J. Abrams also being added to the writing credits now. I kind of think that was just going to happen. I mean, he's the director. Yeah. JJ's a writer. Of course, he was going to get in on the writing before this thing was all said and done. That part doesn't surprise me. It's the Michael Arndt is done. He's brought us a great script. We're very happy. Thank you, Michael. Here's your check. Take care. Lawrence Kasdan's going to finish it up from here. Is that just a nice way of saying, no, Michael, we didn't really like your script? Let's have Lawrence take a crack at it. No, I, I don't think so. I think you can have good bones and recognize that something is is not finished. You know, I've 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 seen scripts that were in production where it's like, wow, this is almost a thing. But like this part here where I just felt is dead, you, you need to have somebody punch it up. And so you you get situations that I suspect like this, where it's like, let's get somebody in there to fill in these 12 gaps and take this to the next level. And I think that Lawrence Kasdan politically was a fantastic way. Because keep we're talking about rehabilitating some brands out there and and you know, re rejiggering what people what things mean to people. Uh Star Wars does not mean the same thing now that it meant. 12 years ago, right before The Phantom Menace. And uh, there needs to be, I, I think it's worth it to spend the money politically to get uh, a name that that all the hardcore fans are going to rally around to to essentially, you have this bridge, right? You've got, you've got this story that they say they're excited about. You've got names associated with some of the biggest names, uh, movies from, from our childhood. And then you also have J.J. Abrams' name officially attached to it. I think uh, from a political standpoint, from a branding perspective, this is fantastic. And nutty enough, I also think it might be the right call artistically for these stories. I think that what we're going to get, I, I think it's going to be really good. I believe again, and I can't believe I'm saying that. Yeah, and they also announced like the visual effects supervisor, the special effects supervisor, the sound mixer, uh, and they're mostly JJ's guys, which isn't too surprising either. But we're definitely getting crew in place. Now, they're scheduled to begin shooting spring next year at Pinewood Studios. Releases expected 2015. I've read a couple of different stories out there saying, uh-oh, if they're changing the writer right now, expect a delay. I don't, uh, know. I don't, know. I, I don't know if it's just my not wanting that to be true that makes me skeptical, but I don't feel like this needs to be a delay. But I guess it depends. If they are starting over from scratch and they've totally ditched Michael Arndt's script, then yeah, you're probably going to get a delay. If, the, if it is more of a of a Prometheus situation where they're like, we're going to take it and we're going to rework it, then you might still be able to shoot next year. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I Disney's track record, it, it, I mean, and I, keep in mind, I don't know nothing. This is all wild speculation on my side. Uh, uh, when I think too. of Disney, yeah. I, don't, I don't often think of delays or getting around and pushing stuff back. Now, recent stories notwithstanding, you know, we talked about how Pixar was pushing their release uh, till next year. There's going to be like a, a summer without a Pixar movie. That made the news because it was so rare for us to hear that kind of thing. I, I, I feel like they're more the buckle down, 
shut up, let's get it done, especially when they just spent a billion dollars to, to get something. Yeah, obviously they want to. It's just whether whether it's possible. And, and I, I don't know either. I, I, I don't, you know, I'm not, I've never made a film. At least I'm going to vote a, for, I'm going to vote for, yeah. yes, please release it on time. I'm and I'm going to vote that it should be awesome. <laughs> I'm going to vote for both of those things too. You know what looks awesome is that Captain America 2 trailer. Uh, it, I was it, blown away by this thing. Amazing. I did not expect. Yeah. Okay, first of all, Captain America is the cheesiest superhero in the Marvel Universe, give or take. Uh, and the fact that the first Captain America sold me on it and made me made me fell in love with you know with the campy stars and stripes, uh, it, it was great. And the fact that he stayed relevant in Avengers also great. This, where he's he's working for the U.S. government, and it seems like one of the themes that they put in this is is that he starts to maybe wonder if he's doing the right thing. I mean, did you, uh, that's that's an oh, obvious. Yeah. Theme in this, right? The Winter Soldier, which is the name of, the, of this movie, looks to be a Bourne movie in a way, right? It's not quite the same thing because, you know, but there is a secret identity, but they know who he is. And But it's, you know, we've engineered this guy and he's not sure he's doing the right thing. And like, it's it's a thriller is what it is. It's a, it's a very post, post 9-11 movie. You know, post 9-11, we had these, these, these very uber patriotic, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 terrorism porn shows, you know, like 24. And in some way, Captain America, that's what felt so odd about Captain America after the fact was was that it was so long after that 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 rah-rah adrenaline rage. And then to have this kind of like a turn against it, this coming out in an era where U.S. foreign policy is very much under question. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we hear about the NSA spying and everything. It, I, I feel like this is going to really resonate with with me, or and and I think with a lot of Americans. I, it's fascinating to me that they're able to pull this off. I think this is great. And it's it's a it's a testament to the fact that Marvel Studios is doing an amazing job because it's not just hiring Joss Whedon was was part of doing that amazing job, but this this doesn't have anything to do with Joss. And it's still like let's 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 play with the genres. Let's have a fan. Let's have an epic fantasy movie. Let's have a political thriller. Let's you know let's let's make these interesting. And I, I can't wait to see it. I'm actually can't wait to see Thor too either. They they, they both. Look I great. hear Thor. I hear uh, everything I've heard about Thor is believe the hype. It sounds like uh, like it's it's way better than the first one is what I'm hearing. But. You know, who knows? It's all buzz. I will see it, and I will tell you, as, as you probably will too. I <laughs> believe it's time for scan lines. It's amazing to me how dated that song got so quickly. <laughs> Instantly. <laughs> Doesn't it, does it feel old now, even though it's old? Yeah, it, yeah. Maybe, maybe Song of the need, need, that's why that's why it needs to be a folk ballad. A folk ballad is timeless. Yeah, timeless it's like Cats right. in the Cradle. Give me a Cats in the Cradle version of a Scanline song. That Scanline thing was perfect in August. Now suddenly. That's right. All right. Uh, starting us off with Direct TV and Time Warner, according to Bloomberg, are saying, yeah, we're gonna make our own Aereos. If Aereo ends up being legal, heck yeah, we might even just buy Aereo. Who knows? We're crazy. Yeah, okay, first of all, uh, number one, brilliant. Number two, yes. Uh, number three, uh, maybe maybe that makes it harder for Aereo because when the Aereo decision is just a decision on Aereo, you can apply one set of rules in, in deciding justice. It's a little bit different when you realize you're about to open the door for essentially all of the cable subscribers to go through this Rube Goldberg loophole in order to not pay their retransmission fees. Yeah, and they, none of them want to pay the retransmission fees. Of course, this is just going to cause the Ragnarok that is the broadcaster saying, well, then we're not going to put our best shows on and broadcast over the air anymore. So oh, whatever. they're still going to have to pay us. You shut up, uh, you crybabies. It's like, that that's what you do happen. right now is you broadcast it for free. It's going to happen in like two years. You just wait and see. Let's Less reset. Two years. I'm going to say one year. One year. All right. Uh, well, all I'm right. Look, Supreme uh, Court. Okay. Uh, hey, man, 9 to 5 Mac reporting. Some Disney and Pixar movies pulled from the iTunes store. Report of deletions from Apple TV. Oh, wait, update. It was a glitch. Uh, what's uh, what's the story with this, Tom? Yeah, this is a cautionary tale because a bunch of Disney things got pulled out of the iTunes store and accidentally they got pulled out of people's iCloud accounts. Now, that's not supposed to happen. You can pull things out of the store, which Disney does all the time, apparently, according to their statement. Uh, but you're not, once you buy... A movie, it's supposed to stay in your iCloud account. That's the whole point of the Apple TV not needing a bunch of storage is that you can access your cloud account and play your movies anytime you want. And I think this is a cautionary tale. 
when you don't actually own a DRM-free copy of something, even if it's by accident, your rights can disappear at any time. Yeah, I don't know that. Uh, whatever. I, mean, who, I get I get angry thinking about this. No, you don't own anything, and it, and if you're gonna tell people, ah, screw it, I'm out of time. Uh, Netflix has announced all eight seasons of Dexter coming to the service. Uh, another one of their coups. Remember they said Walking Dead, Mad Men, that kind of stuff. This is the one kind of stuff that people watch on Netflix. And uh, it's going to start on Halloween with the first four seasons. And then other seasons uh, to follow. All of them should be there by January 1st, 2014. Now, this is different in that I don't think I've ever heard an announcement like this where they announced that X number of seasons will be available now and then later we'll pick up the remaining seasons. Like, have we ever seen a two-part decision like this? Yeah, announced? I wonder if this is a rights thing or if this is just Netflix saying, oh, well, let's put four of the seasons up on Halloween and then we'll hold back four of them to see what happens to the viewership. We'll put those out on a I holiday on January 1st so people can binge the rest of them. And my guess is they save a considerable amount of money doing it this way as well. If you don't, you know, uh, yeah, that's one of the problems is why would you pay for all eight seasons if, you know, you could get all the publicity twice with two releases, first with the first four, then with the, the remaining four. Yeah. and, and, and Should I, I watch it? I, it's worrisome. It's worrisome. That's all I'm going to say. Hulu finally brings free videos to mobile, but it's just clips and it only works in the browser for now. I cannot think of a better headline that starts off exciting and with every word gets less and less <laughs> exciting here. It's really uh, linear, isn't it? It, oh, it really great. is, right? Yeah. You're, like, you're like, oh, oh. Free, uh, Hulu, oh. mobile, uh, clips, browser. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I don't know I didn't even know. I, I didn't even This is I'm going to do the reboot. reverse. Yes. This I'm is, also this is Hulu do basically saying, when you go to the Hulu site in our browser, let's give them something. So yeah, instead screw of you just guys. Look, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the reverse of an extension. Just cancel the rest. Of, I, I yield my 20 seconds to the floor. <laughs> All right, let's start the clock over. Walmart's Voodoo and Sony Pictures introducing something called online extras for digital movies. Uh, this is when you buy an ultraviolet copy, you will get DVD-like extras uh, and some features that haven't been available on DVDs, like enhanced scene search, the ability, the ability to clip and share scenes and on Facebook uh, without violating copyright. And this is all just part of buying a movie. When you buy the movie on Vudu, you get access to all of this stuff. Uh, and if you already own the movie, you should be granted access as it's rolled out. I think District 9 is the first one that's going to come with these extras. This, this idea of clipping out little bits of movies seems to be nonsensical on the surface, but I think it's structurally one of the most important decisions they can make to work everything out. So many times, there's a big difference between uh, uh, just answering a tweet with a one word yes or answering a tweet by linking to an illegal YouTube clip of some right. famous moment that better encaptures that, that, that moment. I will take an extension on this. Uh, I, think that, um, I think that if they can... Uh, institute that and kind of make that a thing of, of replying to people with pop culture media clips. I think that that could be huge uh, because each one of those, number one, cements the position of that movie in the, in the, you know, the, the overmind of the public, but also uh, it's an advertisement for that particular property. And I think ultraviolet is very close to doing it right. Frankly, they could just drop the DRM. They don't need it. It's only making glitches happen. The fact that they're going to store things in the cloud I'm going to use them anyway. I don't care if there's DRM on it or not. The fact that they're going to give me extras that I can access, I don't want to have to store all that stuff. Great. You guys keep track of that. You don't need to DRM it. It's fine. That way I yeah. can back it up and I don't run into one of those Disney things like happened to the people on iTunes. But otherwise, th this is what streaming does. Streaming doesn't need DRM because you're not going to bother with it. You can just stream it anytime you want from Netflix. Yeah, when you have it available, you don't worry about that kind of things. All right, uh... Just as promised two weeks ago, Aereo is finally on the Android. Uh, how, are you an iPhone guy or an Android guy? I am an Android on one tablet and uh, iPhone on my phone. And uh, but, but not in an Aereo market, so we won't get hands-on yeah, with this. Yeah, I was going to say, I, if, I, as far as that goes, it doesn't really matter. But Detroit today is an Aereo market. Congratulations, Detroit. Yeah, and if, if somebody is on Android and checking out Aereo, I would love to hear what the differences are with the iOS implementation in the and the Android OS version. And it's only Android 4.2 as well. So not all Android users yet to be on Android 4.2 can take care of it. So yeah, this this affects almost none of you, but it's a, you know, it's a chalk mark on the on the 
board. Like, okay. Yeah. Area wasn't available for Android before. It's that a was chalk a chalk outloin. Yeah. I said now outloin. <laughs> it's an outloin. Let's say, <laughs> that let's say out loud. That's, 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 that's a whole is, different thing. Gonna have and another kids, drink here. Don't it's search like, that term. Mm, mm. Let's <laughs> fire up the movie draft. Well, 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 well. Justin Robert Young's Jackass presents Bad Grandpa, thirty-two million. Uh, maybe not as good as he wanted to, but not, not shabby by any stretch. Uh, the Counselor, which is Jeff Kanata's movie, seven point eight million. Casey McKinnon still leading the way, two hundred six million. She's got Freebirds coming out this week too. She's gonna yep. kill. Been great knowing you guys. I'm yeah. going to take my $29 million and cry at home alone. This is, yeah. man, I am on a fast track to last place here. This is brutal. Uh, especially because we just got an announcement that, uh, you, you remember when we did the draft, one of the wild cards was like, hey, man, if you're going to do the Wolf of Wall Street, just know word is it might get delayed. Well, it did get delayed, not outside of the winter. So it stays in the winter movie draft, but it moved up to the same weekend as my 15th. Jack Ryan, which got booted to, uh, or I guess it moved, whatever, somehow got in the moved shuffle. To Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Mine, mine got moved past to, uh, to, uh, to the next year, which means I'm going to get awarded some who cares movie. It's like, whatever. This is going to be without a doubt my worst draft, but, uh, uh, at least all the crap fell in one place on my head. <laughs> and this week is my, one of my big tent poles. This, this will kind of make or break. My ability to even compete, I honestly don't think anybody's going to catch Casey at this point with gravity at 200 million, essentially. Uh, but Ender's hey, Game comes out this week, along with Lost, Last Vegas, which is Casey's movie, and Freebirds, an animated film, which is Casey's movie. So she's going to make bank because the animated films always do, unless they're planes. Yeah. Uh, and Ender's Game is questionable. I'm not, I'm not sure how it's going to do. Last Vegas, by the way, has massive star power, of, of course, where it's, it's, it's like four giant names, you know, Kevin Klein, uh, you know, uh, uh, Rod, anyway, all of them. All those Morgan other Freeman, names. Blah, blah, blah. Those names. Those big names that I clearly can't access right now live those on the Those names that are as big as uh, Kevin Klein. But kind of like him. <laughs> bigger, like Kevin Klein's the lowest name on I that total I can't think of any of then, them, dude. I'm sorry. And then, I tried but, to say. Uh, uh, but of course, also a friend of friend of the NSFW show, Romney Malco. In fact, you guys remember last year during our Halloween spooktacular episode, we uh, we were hanging out in the hotel with me and Romney Malco. He was there shooting Las Vegas, so uh, uh, really excited to check that out, and I hope it does really well. For Michael him. Douglas, Robert De Niro, Morgan Freeman. There you go. Yeah, and, and those are names Mal that are bigger than Kevin Klein <laughs> that Brian should be able to reasonably pick up at any time. Right, I, I say let's just move on to what we're watching. After you buy your ticket for Ender's Game. What we're watching. Not a thing is what Not, Brian put the notes here. I, I can't believe it, and I'm astonished to say so, but like I've been, and I don't even have an excuse. I can't say I've been on the road, I've been busy. I kind of had like a relaxing week. I didn't watch a damn thing. It was really well, so weird. So what, what, what did you do? Did you, you know, were you painting? Were you sculpting? Were you writing? Uh, you I, <laughs> a little, little bit. I was playing some video games. A little, okay. little bit of video game playing. Not No lie. Uh, but uh, I do want to plug one thing that, uh, that I did watch. I did watch. I watched a 30-second commercial spot from your friend and mine, who I finally get to say in public what he's been up to, Andrew Main yeah. uh, announced that he's doing a, a he's he's recorded a whole run of shows on A and E. It's called Don't Trust Andrew Main. His first promo spot ran uh, on the finale of Duck Dynasty, and I love what he's doing. It's a different flavor from Magic uh, that I've ever seen before. Uh, and and I and know this, know this. And if you're a friend of the show, you probably are familiar with Andrew Main's work, and you listen to him on the Weird Things podcast. Uh, with me and Justin Robert Young, all the suits, they all focus inordinately on the social marketing metrics. So right now, if you can, go to facebook.com slash don't trust Andrew Main. That's facebook.com slash don't trust Andrew Main. Throw him a like. It won't cost you nothing. You'll be able to get the promos because most of your cord cutters probably don't even have A&E on there. It's a really great show. It's a really clever idea. There's so many things I still wish I could tell you about it, but I can't yet. But we are very, very excited Andrew Main is one of our own, and uh, this is a big, big show. Look at that. He just crossed over 1,000 likes, and the suits care very, very deeply about that silly number of likes. 
that kind of social proof. Here, take a look at this. Can, can you give me audio on this? And I like yeah, this here you go. Check this out. You a Duck Dynasty fan? Yeah. I want you to blow into that duck call. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> They're yours now, so you need to take care of them. Don't trust Andrew May. A new series coming in January on A and E. Nice anyway, could not Dynasty be more excited. Yeah. I yeah. Like that. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, anyway, yeah, that that's all I've watched is that one promo on repeat, nonstop. <laughs> so you so you were playing video games, hanging out with the family. You just didn't feel the need. You were entertained otherwise. I guess. Yeah. It's huh. kind of weird, right? Oh. Huh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. No, I was I was I was doing stuff like that too, except I did watch the World Series, Homeland and Agents of Shield and Top Chef and Haven and a bunch of Doctor Who episodes because Eileen was catching up and Walking Dead. That's it. Uh, it wasn't that much. <laughs> I don't I, have a problem. You have a problem. Your face has a problem. Art That's <laughs> too. I I'm falling behind myself. though. Now I'm I'm three episodes behind on The Walking Dead. Does your does your encouragement still stand? Like all if three of The anything, Walking Dead. If anything, it might have grown. Really? Oh, I'm so excited. No, so excited. I, I don't want to exaggerate it, but you know, this this episode was just more more awesome. Uh, more like, oh yeah, that's what was missing, and I don't want to say because I don't want to spoil okay. it for nope. you. Yeah, that's fine. That's but, fine. I'll, but, I'll, I'll watch all three of those, and we'll do a big. Or I guess it'll be four by this next time, so we'll have yeah. like four hours of stuff to to plow through. Very excited about it. All right, I I don't know why, but I just I, I want to purport I want to I want to put out this idea of like Brian saying, no, I have a shoe television to work on my my <laughs> my paintings on my etchings. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, oh, I will say I watched one other arch. thing. Uh, this morning, I watched. I was looking for opening videos uh, before you suggested those Star Wars outtakes, and I did watch the Saturday Night Live uh, parody of Wes Anderson doing a horror movie. Did you see that? Oh, I heard about it. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. Yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's worth just type in Wes Wes Anderson SNL and just go into it blind. You'll you'll dig it a lot. All right, let's take some time for feedback. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Frame Rate. Oh yeah. Our first piece of feedback comes from Keith, who says, I think Brian has a point about YouTube's copyright infringement procedures. The unintended consequence of an extra legal procedure might be that the content owners are more likely to flag videos as infringing just to get them taken down, regardless of the merits of the use of the content. Perhaps if a content creator waives their right to the YouTube process and claims an affirmative defense of fair use for criticism, parody, et cetera, the content owners would be less likely to file an actual DMCA takedown because they will need to review the video for the actual use of the content and truly determine whether they want to make that claim and take the content creator to court. YouTube had to implement the content ID functionality to get big business content owners off their case, but in doing so, they may have made it too easy for content owners to take down videos without proper review. Keith's internal logic is sound here, saying like, well, if you only had one shot where you had to review the content, uh, maybe that would make a difference. Frankly, though, I don't think it would. Uh, I, I think that this content ID system, because you can immediately say, put it back up, uh, also throws a few bones in the way of the content owner as well. Uh, and, and so it, it really, if anything, it just adds a la layer of bureaucracy to the thing. I, I, I believe it was put in there because they wanted that, uh, that ability to give the content owners a chance to put their stuff back up as, so, that the, so that the bots that go through and just pull down things wouldn't wreck the entire system. If you only had the one layer, everything would go through that court case procedure. And so when the bot made an error, it would be a lot more complicated. Yeah. i uh, got an email from Ralph who uh, commented on my rampant dwarfism. And I blame Justin <laughs> Robert Young for uh -oh. instilling that in me. Uh, he says, Peter Dinklage grew up around me in Jersey. His mother was my wife's music teacher. One of his first roles in this indie flick called uh, The Station Agent was filmed in my hometown of Rockaway, New Jersey. Ralph, uh, and he says, uh, P.S., I have a story about shaving cable. I had a Comcast and downgraded my channels uh, to just broadcast, so AMC, so no AMC or sci-fi. I found out that I still had access to all the free on-demand channels, even though I couldn't watch Walking Dead on AMC, but I could watch it on demand for free. I don't know if this was a glitch in the system because I had the full, uh, because 
I had full mm -hmm. ca cable then changed. Uh, it worked until I changed to Fios a year later. So uh, this is an interesting conundrum because we talked about the legal versus ethical thing. I, I would assume this is legal because they are providing you the service. Yeah. Is it ethical? It, Do you have an ethical obligation to nah. when somebody is giving you a service that you're not paying for to well, I, not he, use it? He doesn't. Okay. Here, here's why I think it's totally ethical is he doesn't know if if it's a glitch or not. There was nothing where they said, like, now, we just want to warn you, you won't be able to get on-demand channels for the ones you don't subscribe. And then he went to on-demand and he got them and was like, ooh, right. there's a mistake. Should I report it? Then you've got an ethical conundrum. Sounds like he was like, nobody ever said anything and I can get these on-demand channels, so I guess that's just the way it works. I know it's not yeah. the way it works with DirecTV. If I don't subscribe to a channel, the on-demand channel doesn't work. My guess is it probably is a glitch, but if no one ever said otherwise... I don't know, but it's also it's also weird too because it's like to whom does he owe that money, right? Because it's like he uh, he uh, I, I I don't know. I'm, I'm just gonna fall I, into. I, I a, feel like a, it's probably a, not an ethical thing at all because it's probably just it could be that the system wasn't set up to do that yet, right? It's like oh that cable box can't actually block on demand channels, so I guess they'll get everything for a while till we get everybody upgraded to newer boxes. You know, that's what that's where my mind went immediately when I read his email. No, that's a very good point. Very good point. Bloop Squish writes, this may be my, by the way, this may be my favorite new person who wrote us, Bloop Squish. <laughs> this may be my new favorite thing about the Chromecast. I discovered that when a block of ads starts to play on Hulu Plus, if I switch from casting to my phone and immediately back to casting, it will resume the show without ads. Simply repeat this at each ad block throughout whatever you are watching. It takes only about 10 seconds and bada bing, Hulu Plus with no ads. Try it and see. And I suppose enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah. He says, what do you think? <laughs> I, I think, yeah. Enjoy it while it lasts. They'll figure out how to block that. But that's kind of crazy. Nice, nice workaround, Loop Squish. Yeah, no, I thought that was very, very clever. Um, do, do we have time for one more, uh, yeah, one yeah, more email? This one comes from Gary, and he takes both of us to task. He says, both of us are wrong. Uh, he says, I have listened to Frame Usually. Rate now for years and heard you guys discuss this season. He's talking about uh, AMC's The Walking Dead. I went out and hoovered up the graphic novels and bided my time with finger on the iTunes checkout button, yearning for the ghost of Apple past and the AMC Grinch to soften a little. And finally, voodoo and my digital time machine came through and click. Now, just this very minute, I finished season three. Now, keep in mind, season three is, if I remember correctly, uh, season one was pretty true to the book. Season two was all about what's in the barn. Season three is the one that I gave up on because I, I hated their handling of the governor and I hated everything I was seeing. He says, just this very minute, I finished season three. Uh, I think this was the best season ever. How could you not believe that? Now here, this is what, okay. He says, shame on you, Tom, for disparaging Brian from watching it. Uh, uh, held me right through. Wasn't too mushy, angsty as season two. Still had the religious problem with so much gore. Or, uh, but brilliant. The only beef I had was that, I assume we're in spoiler territory here, so if you're not watching the show, be, you know, the only beef I had with all that gore and zombie guts was how come it's only biting that infects you? Why isn't it like Ebola or HIV? HIV? Biting doesn't infect you. That's, okay, whatever. Uh, the point is, he freaking loved season three, which is remarkable to me. And, and, and I can't even say he's crazy because he didn't know how much better was handled in the comics because he clearly said he read the comics. So, you know, who knows? What good for well, you, I guess. Sorry. First of all, Gary, um, shame on you for thinking that biting causes you to turn into a zombie because that's not how it works. No, I'm just I'm stealing his line. Shame on you. Uh okay, you can shame on me for disparaging Brian, but Brian was inclined not to watch it. Okay. Brian had already quit watching it and said, Is it safe to come back in? Knowing that Brian didn't like what had happened up till that point. I wasn't going to tell him, yeah, come on back in, knowing that he was going to watch it and go, this is crap. Why did you tell me to come back in? That that doesn't yeah, make I'll any sense. I'm waiting until it gets to a point where I feel like knowing what Brian doesn't like, he will like this part because that's how you get him to watch it again. Not tell him to watch something you know he's not going to like. If if I can, let me give Gary specifically a challenge. And for anyone else who's kind of like on the fence, uh, do me a favor. Go to YouTube and look up Your Movie Sucks, The Walking Dead. Uh, it is a scathing, uh, part one, uh, part two is supposed to come out. It is a, a scathing indictment of the way Frank Darabont was treated for as much as he gave to this story and as much as he put into it and the way you could see the difference before and after he, his departure and the number of favors he called in 
Uh, it's it's really astonishing. And I know none of that should necessarily matter. Give it, you know, it, it's either a good story or not, but it does a very good job of of explaining why all of a sudden things got really mushy and and lost many of the things that we liked about it originally. Um, I would love to hear Gary's take on on that particular video. That's all I'm gonna also, say. Also, Gary probably is gonna hate the current season if he didn't like the gore, uh, because that does not get less. Yeah. Oh no, they they know what side their money's buttered on. They, they, they butter it on the on the Jackson side. Yeah. Blood butter. The, you see blood buttery butter? like <laughs> bodily fluids coming out of those people. I'm going to make a band called Blood Butter. That sounds awesome. <laughs> I know. I'm going to Emo's to see Blood Butter tonight. You want to come? <laughs> I, don't, I don't normally talk on this show, but I approve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Wow. We even, made, we even got Jason. <laughs> That's it. We're forming this band. It's a three piece now. Awesome. All right. Well, that, uh, thank it's you guys. Smooth uh, jazz for right is what in. we play. <laughs> don't forget about the chicken challenge, by the way. We reference that every once in a while. If you're like, what does that mean? Uh, that's the call up your cable operator and say, you know what? I'm done. I'm quit quitting and see what kind of deal they'll give you because often they will give you a deal. And we have a Google Plus community where people are sharing their different strategies and experiences uh, if you want to see how it's worked for other people before you take just, it. Just Check go it to Google Plus and type in uh, blood butter. No, I said type in chicken <laughs> challenge. And, Who knows what you'll, you'll get. <laughs> Don't do that. Type in chicken challenge and you'll find it. I had uh, one email, somebody asking, what was that subreddit you were talking about? It's not a subreddit, bro. It's not a, a Google subreddit. Plus community. I know it's a little weird that it's a Google Plus. Boy, typing in blood butter gets you dining with Donald. And two communities called Butter Blood and Butter and Blood. We're going to have so. to, that's the title of the episode. I'm changing it right now. It's Blood, oh, yeah, blood sure Butter. That's fine. <laughs> uh, don't forget, folks, we have a YouTube channel and you should subscribe and get your friends to subscribe too. YouTube.com slash Twit Frame Rate. It's another way to get the shows that you can watch perhaps on your Chromecast or some other YouTube enabled device. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash FR. That's where you get the podcast, which you should also subscribe to if you're not. Why aren't you? Uh, to get it delivered to you so you can watch it where you want, when you want, on whatever device you want. We're putting our money where our mouth is. See there. what you did there. I like you it. Can Email us, our email address, framerate at twit.tv. You can find us live on Mondays at 3.30 p.m. Pacific, 6.30 p.m. Eastern at twit.tv slash FR. We'll see you then next Monday.